Hi, I'm Chuck Strickfade, Safety Manager for Corporal Companies. Today we are going to discuss one of the AGN's life-saving rules, electrical lockout tagout. Society has long had respect and a fascination for electricity. From the time of Ben Franklin to Edison and Tesla, we have looked for ways to harness the power of electricity and use it for our benefit. Throughout this process, we have seen the great danger of uncontrolled electrical current. We have used electricity to show drama in movies and in theater. The presence of electric sparks not only draws the attention of the viewer, but also seems to indicate danger. Although the electricity in the movies is entertaining, electricity in real life can be deadly. Although no one was hurt in this video, you can imagine the potential danger if an arc flash occurred near you. Let's listen to the story of one of our fellow employees from the UK. When I was 18, I received an electric shock when I failed to check that the electric cable was isolated prior to routine maintenance. A friend asked for some assistance to rewire a house. As we were doing some routine repairs, I neglected to confirm for myself full isolation from the AC source. I was accidentally exposed to 240 volts AC. Poor insulation on the cable and sweat completed an electrical circuit with an entry point through my right hand and exit point through my left hand. The resultant circuit passed directly across my heart. The electricity caused a contraction of my muscles and I was unable to let go until the source was de-energized. The electrical exposure caused full thickness burns requiring numerous skin grafts and amputation of my left index and left middle finger to the first knuckle. I was also required to spend three months in rehabilitation at the hospital. I could provide numerous excuses for the incident, but the key factor was I did not take the time to confirm full electrical isolation. This simple and important task is now part of my everyday duties. This one lapse in judgment caused an incident which had significant impact on myself and my family with care and rehabilitation required. As you can imagine, our UK employee got more than a scare. He received considerable injuries and is lucky that he wasn't killed. Too many encounters with electricity result in electrocution. As a company, we want to do everything possible to avoid any type of serious injury. We write safety policies and procedures to create a culture that minimizes our risk when working around any known hazards. To help emphasize the importance of avoiding the worst hazards, Asian has developed life-saving rules. The concept behind the Asian life-saving rules is to identify key issues that have had the potential to expose our people to the greatest risk of serious injury or death. Further, the rules ensure all Asian employees, regardless of position within the company, understand the importance of proper mitigation of risk in these important areas. Today, we will examine AGM's life-saving rule for electrical lockout-tagout. Simply said, the life-saving rule for electrical and lockout-tagout states, no worker shall deliberately violate AGM's lockout-tagout policy. Failure to acknowledge and address issues within this group of hazards will be viewed as a serious violation of company policy and will result in discipline up to and including termination of employment. We want to make sure all workers understand that they have the right to stop work they feel is unsafe, and that includes work they feel violates AGM's lockout, tagout, or electrical policies, or exposes anyone to an unmitigated hazard. Although we are not going to discuss all the specifics of our lockout, tagout, electrical policies, Brian is going to cover some of the basic safe work practices when it comes to electricity. Hi, I am Ryan Billmeyer, Safety Manager for In Situ Form. As Chuck has said, Ageon has placed electrical safety as one of its life saving rules. Here are some of the basic safe work practices when working around electricity. The hierarchy of controls is a fundamental and well established approach for managing hazards. Using this approach, companies must use the highest feasible 
level of control. The hierarchy starts with elimination, the most effective, and moves down to the least effective safety measure, PPE. Not all hazards can be eliminated, but the closer you get to the top, the safer a worker will be. The hierarchy of control methods are elimination, physically removing the hazard, substitution, replacing the hazard, engineering controls, isolating people from the hazard, administrative controls, change the way people work, personal protective equipment, protecting the worker with PPE. For electrical equipment, elimination and substitution may not always be feasible. Using engineering controls, we can create a dead front that isolates any potential exposures to creating access to controls without having the exposure to the electrical circuit. We see examples of this in circuit breakers, control panels, and switches. In all these devices, equipment can be turned on, adjusted, and monitored without exposure to any shock hazards. Often, however, the work we do on electrical equipment requires us to be exposed to the energy source. Then the preferred approach to working on or around electrical hazards is de-energizing the source. Lockout tagout ensures everyone working on electrical equipment is protected. The basic steps are, turn off the equipment that will be worked on, isolate the energy source, verify the energy source is isolated. Taking these steps will ensure the worker isn't accidentally shocked. Some key elements of lockout tagout are critical to achieving the desired protection for all workers. Each worker applies their own lock to the disconnecting device. All workers have individual locks. Each worker has only one key to their lock. The equipment is not turned on until all locks have been removed. This brief description of lockout tagout, lockout tagout program does not provide all the specific details of the program. Always refer to the company's lockout tagout policy and receive the proper training before working on any electrical equipment. If you have any questions, contact your supervisor or your safety manager. Many times we need to work on electrical equipment with the power on. The only thing standing between us and a high voltage jolt our gloves. Selecting the right electrical insulating gloves can provide protection from electrical current when working on energized electrical equipment. Check out these five important electrical safety glove tips that can help prevent electrical shocks. The slightest bit of damage to the glove can cause the glove to fail. Glove failure, glove failure will mean you get shocked. To help prevent an electrical shock, remember these five electrical safety glove tips. Number one, date stamps. New gloves must be placed into service within the previous 12 months of the manufacturer's date stamp. They are not, they must be electrically tested by an accredited laboratory. Number two, test labs. Gloves should be sent to an accredited laboratory for testing every six months after placing the gloves in service. Number three, glove classification. Use the glove appropriate for the work being performed Electrical safety gloves are categorized by the level of voltage protection they provide and whether or not they are resistant to the ozone. Number four, glove inspection. Gloves should be inspected for tears, holes, cuts, and other defects before each use. Number five, glove air test. OSHA requires an air test be performed along with inspections for insulating gloves. Basically, the glove is filled with air, either manually or with a power inflator, and then checked for leakage. Here are some other electrical safe work practices that will help protect us from harm. Promptly replace frayed, damaged, or worn electrical cords or cables. Only use extension cords with grounding prongs. Protect flexible cords and cables from damage. Sharp corners and projections could, should be avoided. When working with portable electrical tools and appliances, use extension cord sets that are three wire type and designed for hard or extra hard service. Maintain all electrical tools and equipment in a safe condition and check regularly for defects. Take out of service if a defect is found. Do not bypass any protective system or device designed to protect employees from contact with electrical energy. Overhead and underground electrical power lines are located and identified. 
ensure that ladders, scaffolds, equipment, or other materials never come within 10 feet of electrical power lines. All electrical tools must be properly grounded unless they are of the double insulated type. Multiple plug adapters are prohibited. All the information that Ryan provided talks about how we can avoid electrical shocks. Since the shock can cause extreme damage to both ourselves and to our equipment and property, Asian has emphasized the importance of these safe work practices by making electrical and lockout tagout one of its life-saving rules. Failure to comply with this life-saving rule will be viewed as a serious violation of company policy and will result in discipline up to and including termination of employment. It also empowers all workers with the right to stop work if they feel a job site or a work location is unsafe. In the story earlier, we heard about a UK employee that suffered some injuries after his failure to isolate electricity while doing some wiring in a home. Let's look at some of the electrical hazards that occurred to that young man and hazards that happen when we do not follow safe work practices. Why should you be concerned about electrical safety? Let's look at some of the hazards that we may be exposed to. Burns. A burn is the most common shock related injury. Burns from electricity are one of three types, electrical, arc flash, or thermal contact. Electrocution. Electrocution is fatal. It means to kill with electricity. Electrocution results when a human is exposed to a lethal amount of electrical energy. Shock. Shock results when the body becomes part of the electrical circuit. Current enters the body at one point and leaves at another. Electrical shock is defined as a reflex response to the passage of electrical current through the body. Arc flash, arc blast. An arc flash is a sudden release of electrical energy through the air when a high voltage gap exists and there is a breakdown between conductors. An arc flash gives off thermal radiation, heat, and bright, intense light that can cause burns. Temperatures have been recorded as high as 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit. High voltage arcs can also produce considerable pressure waves by rapidly heating the air and creating a blast. Fire. Most electrical distribution fires result from problems with fixed wiring, such as faulty electrical outlets and old wiring. Problems with cords, such as extension and appliance cords, plugs, receptacles, and switches also cause electrical fires. Explosion. An explosion can occur when electricity ignites an explosive mixture of material in the air. Therefore, be safe by recognizing, avoiding, and protecting against all these electrical hazards. This concludes lesson one of our life-saving rule for electrical lockout tagout. Often when we look at these hazards and think that most of these are things that happen to someone else. We feel be safe is our everyday practice and that we are doing everything we can to avoid these hazards. In lesson two, we will listen to Rick Kimple of Asian Coding Services in Conroe, Texas, talk about an incident that happened at their facility.